Good evening, Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. It is Wednesday night, prayer service, Bible study in the great city of Albion, Michigan. This is our first Bible study of the year and of the decade, 2020. Are you thankful that God allowed you to see the new decade? And give God a top off the board, a privilege of being in the land of the new having a reasonable portion of health and a sound mind, and having the ability to move and have our being, and to open up our mouth and give God some praise, because he is worthy of our praise. I thank God for this new decade, and I'm not into making too many New Year's resolutions, but I want Jesus to be my boss, and I want to follow after Jesus every day this year. So I hope that Jesus is number one on your agenda, and your priority for this year. Let us bow our heads and pray as we begin our Bible study tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for waking us up and starting us on our way. We thank you for the privilege of coming into your house, of house of prayer, where we can come to you, Lord, knowing that you are ready to hear from your children. Father, we are so blessed to be a part of your family, that you have chosen us out of the darkness and allowed us to come into your marvelous light. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins, cleansing me of all unrighteousness, and giving me a clean heart so that I can serve you in spirit and in truth. Father, I ask that you bless everyone here today as we come before you. Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit to come into this place, that it will rule, reign, and have its way, and it will be the one that gets the glory, the honor, and the praise as we celebrate this new year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord our Savior, and the boss. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Good evening, Macedonia. Amen. It's the evening that the Lord has made, and we will really rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I'm happy to be here in the house of the Lord with the rest of the family. Amen. 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 Oh my goodness, so happy to see so many smiling faces this evening. Uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Let's give God some thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank give God. God some thanks. Turn with me, please, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And uh, we're going to look at verses 16 through 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. From the King James Version of the Bible, the scripture reads, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, Amen. the word of God. No matter what we're dealing with, no matter what the start of 2020, a new decade is looking like, <coughs> we all as believers in Jesus Christ can have something to rejoice about. Amen. 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 We know that we started this year off as a corporate body of believers with a lot going on. Amen. And even in that stuff, we still can rejoice. Then God tells us something else. Pray without ceasing. That's right. Keep praying. Pray without ceasing. Pastor McKenzie taught us a while ago that mature prayer is a conversation with God where we do more listening than we do talking. Yep. So we can always be in the prayer moment when we are actually communing with the Holy Spirit for li active listening for instruction. Because God is always talking to his kids. Yeah. Which means he always wants to talk and he is always talking to us to give us direction. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? And then in everything. Everything. In everything. 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 Right. Brother Joe, in everything, yeah. no matter what that thing is, give thanks. Yeah. For this is the will of God in his son concerning you and I. Right. So just for a few minutes, simply by yourself, find a reason to give God thanks based on the scriptures that were read in your hearing. First Thessalonians chapter 5. 
verses 16 through 18. We're going to take two minutes on this one. Ready and go. seconds. topics for the month of January 2020 is a fresh start. So please turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16 and 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 16 and 17. From the King James Version of the Bible, the scripture reads, For which cause we thank not but though our outward man perish, <coughs> yet the inward man is what? Renewed, Renewed day by day. Say fresh start. Fresh start. Fresh start. Why? For our light affliction, mm. which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The word of God. God. I love that set of scriptures because... This is the start of a new month, a new year, and a new decade. But God said in his word that we are renewed day by day, which is telling us, my brothers and my sisters, that we have a fresh start every single day. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, if we dig deeper in that scripture, it says that every moment yeah. we have a fresh start. Amen. So can you really wrap your mind around the fact that, okay, let's see, I got a fresh start, let's say five seconds from now. Five, four, three, two, one. I got a fresh start. And so do you. Amen? Amen. And verse 17 really tells us something, and first lady, you caught it. For our <coughs> light affliction. That means that everything we're going through the bereavement process, the financial struggles we have, the relationship issues, our kids acting up, even 45 in the White House clowning. The scripture says that's light affliction. Woo, I like that. Which is but for a moment. It's only temporary, my brothers and my sisters. What may seem like the darkest day in your life, the Bible says it's for a moment. And it's a light affliction. It's like stubbing your toe. Now, honestly, you may be going through it, but ah, leaning on the word of God says, man, that's light work. Yeah. I got something way better in store for you, the ones that believe in me, because he goes on to promise, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That sounds like good news That's to me. Good. So, with your prayer partner, let us pray together for a fresh start based on 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. And since we are off to a fresh start, let us all stand as we pray this prayer. We'll take two more minutes on this one. 
Ready? Go. Sister Mary Ann Atkins, Sister Tiana Patterson, Brother Ivan Green, and Brother John Etchison. There any other special prayer requests, sick and shut in, and prayers for the bereaved families? Deacon Bowie. Oh, yeah, so Johnny May Curtis, who is related to Essie's uh, daughter. Yes, sir. And uh, so she's really ill right now. Amen. So we can pray for healing. Pray for Sister Johnny May Curtis. And the Curtis family, Sister Shikari. Prayers for comfort for the Simpson family and our grandfather. She lost, he lost his sister. Prayers for the Simpson family and the transitioning of life of the Cora Simpson or Cora Goldsby? Cora Goldsby. Cora Goldsby. That's Kenny Goldsby's mother. Amen. Amen. Sister McGeer. Um, my nephew, um, Brother Delmas Clark Jr. Brother Delmas Clark Jr. had to put him back on um, life, life support. Prayer of healing for Brother Delmas Clark. Clark Jr. Amen. Sister White. Uh, prayer for Daniel Wright and Jaleesa Atkins for healing. Prayer for Sister Danielle White. Right. Right. And Sister Jaleesa Atkins for healing. And myself for healing on my hands. And for Sister Breanne White for healing of her hands. And for um, our families at home to join Macedonian family and the walk of faith for a vision of Jesus. Amen. 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 All that you said. Praise God. <laughs> Sister Alexis. Um, prayers of comfort for the Mastin and Cage family. Continue prayers of comfort for the Mastin and Cage families. Um, and just a special prayer request on myself and my sister. And special prayer request for Sister Alexis Miller and all her siblings. Amen. Brother Damon. Have two. Uh, yes, Min sir. Minister Charnette Spicer. Minister Charnette Spicer. And Dr. Tony Evans. His, and Dr. Uh, Tony Evans. His wife, his wife passed like two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. I believe actually it was uh, New Year's Eve New when Year's she Day. transitioned. Sister Lois Evans. Yeah. So prayers for the Evans family. Uh, Sister Terry. Hi, good evening. Prayers for the Harris family. The Harris family. And Jameson Harris, special prayer. 
for Brother James Harris. Jameson. Jameson Harris. And special prayer for Sydney Harris. Special prayer for Sister Sydney Harris. Yes, sir. <coughs> Amen. Brother Joe. Um, a prayer for the McKenzie family and, um, um, and this trip going back to college. Amen. 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 Brother McKenzie family, especially Brother Jeffrey and Sister Jamila, mm -hmm. as they return to their college studies. Amen. 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 Sister Edgerson. Uh, prayers for the Sanders family and special prayer for Ebony. Uh, she's expecting, but they found a little problem. We're just praying that that turns out fine. Amen. Prayer mm -hmm. for the Sanders family, as well as Sister yes. Ebony Sanders with the uh, expecting child. Amen. Yeah. Brother Will. A uh, prayer for Sister Berklander. Sister Yvonne Berklander. And also prayer for uh, my wife, Joe. Sister uh, Joe Atkins. She is uh, taking care of Brother <clears throat> Edison, which you already called his name. Amen, amen. Prayer for caregiver role for Sister Joe. Mm -hmm. Sister Chicago. Uh, prayers for all the soldiers that are in Iran right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Prayer for all our military Amen. personnel Amen. in this tumultuous time <coughs> of, yeah, of, yeah, whatever decisions our president is making, yeah, it's causing a lot of people to be on edge. So pray for our country. Amen. Amen. System gear. Pray for our children, the ones Amen. in school and all the stuff that they're going through and mental health and everything. Yes, ma'am. Pray for all children. Amen. For all the vice pressure that's on them. Minister Bean. Uh, for the Macedonian family. Macedonian family. And the leaders of Macedonia as we go into the installation that they uh, faith walk with commitment and Amen. 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 Pray for all leaders of the Macedonian Missionary Baptist Church family. Sister Wilkins. All college students and all college professors, staff, faculty, all of that. Amen. Amen. First lady. Prayer that the LBA community will respond to what Macedonia is offering, especially this month, with the kickoff of Dominion. Amen. And Amen. With the health food that people will come out of. Amen. 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 Praying that the city of Albion will actually come to the table that's been set to feed them, actually help them with their issues as far as the men and all those who are struggling with the mental health issues. Amen. I want to throw the Gibson and the Lowe families in there. Uh, any other prayers, comfort? Sister Patterson. For the Patterson family and the Langston family. And Patterson the family, family and the Langston family. And, and then and the Humphrey family. Amen. Amen. Yes, Sister Jones. Amen. Prayer for focus. Prayer for focus. Prayer for all those that are not saved. Amen. 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 Tanico. What's the last name? Johnson. Tanico Johnson. Tanico. I, don't know, I don't know if it's brother or sister. I think that's sister. Okay. Sister Tanico Johnson? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You can you had your hand up? Yeah. Pray for the raging fires in the continent of Australia. Amen. The uh, earthquake has devastated Puerto Rico and all those people again. Yeah. So we just need to lift up those people that are going through extraordinary suffering. Amen. Pray for the Australian fire victims as well as the victims of the Puerto Rico earthquake. Yep. Amen. Sister Terry. 
Prayer for all of the people that have been released from been incarcerated, yeah. so that they can just move on and and be blessed and live a better life. Amen. 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 Pray for all the. That they've been released from being incarcerated. Yes. Yes. I pray for society. for all those who are returning to society after yes. being incarcerated. Amen. Pray that God covers them and yes. actually gives them favor <laughs> as they return to be good citizens. Brother Joe. Amen. I need to do a big prayer for Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to be filled up with that class. That Amen. Class. If you really want to learn the Bible, that's the, that's the class. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Praying that. The Macedonian church family, as well as the city of Albion, will catch fire to come and attend our Tuesday night continuous Christian education classes. Because they are, woo, we learned some stuff last night, oh my goodness. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. You want to know what we do on Tuesday night? Just show up at Tuesday at 6.30 and you'll find out. Amen? Brother Damon. Mother Mary Travis. For Mother Mary Travis. Amen. Amen. Deacon Bowman. Yeah, thank you for the victims of that Ukrainian airplane that crashed 176 people. My God, my God. Praying for the families of the victims of the Ukrainian uh, plane crash. Also, want to pray for uh, there was a shooting in Detroit at this place called Thunderbolt. It's, it's about a mile down the road from where my uncle lives. And a, a it was everyone involved was Arab Americans, and there was a an altercation this past Monday, actually last Monday, and uh, a shooting. And so we just want to pray for anybody that believes it's okay to solve an issue with a firearm. Amen. Just want to pray that hey, God does something with their heart and gives them godly wisdom. Like hey, okay, if you you get whooped on, you get whooped on, but don't. As Pastor has always trained us, don't put a permanent solution to a temporary issue. Amen. 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 Any other prayers? Yes, sir. Okay. Sister Joan. Um, I was going to put that for my um, nephew, Eric. He's, he's incarcerated right now. So I was what's, what's his last name? Eric Etchison. For Brother Eric Etchison. Amen. Amen. You have one, Doc? Yep. We need to pray for uh, our own member, Ms. Janine, and I can't remember her last name. Nelson, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she's at Borges Hospital right now. Mm -hmm. She certainly needs our prayers. And two doors down from her is Sister Estelle, uh, to Stephanie Estelle, uh, Sister Carter's granddaughter. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Both of those ladies need our prayers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, real kind of weak tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Praying for healing, for a miraculous healing for Sister Janine Nelson and for Sister Stephanie Estelle. Amen. Yes, Sister Jones. You pray for me for school for the second semester. We get harder than Yes. Praise God. Praying for Sister Zakaya Jones, that God will be with her as she goes into the second semester. Is this your senior year or your junior year? <laughs> amen. 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 amen, amen, for junior amen. year of high school. Yes. Brother David. Uh, brother Ronnie Sims and his family. For amen. Brother Ronnie Sims and the Sims family. Amen. 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 Any other city shut in, special prayer requests for this? My mama, Sister Ronnie I'm Gibson. Praise <laughs> God. Yes, ma'am. I'm asking for a special prayer. Ever since I had the I just ain't felt Amen. Amen. Prayer of healing for my mama, Sister Ronnie Gibson. Amen. Amen. Brother Will. Uh, I think we need to set up a special prayer for our president. <laughs> and our federal government. Yes. Yes. Because we are standing on shaky ground. Amen. 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 First lady. Amen. 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 Praying for all ministries and all ministry leaders and leaders mm -hmm. in general mm -hmm. here at the Macedonian Church. Mm -hmm. Any other special prayer requests? Please, seek a shut-in. Prayers of comfort.
for the bereaved families. Going once, twice. So, let's put some scripture to this thing. Let's look at, uh, for our sick and shut in, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 30. And let's look at verse 17, 8. Jeremiah chapter 7, chapter 30, <coughs> verse 17, 8, part 8. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeremiah 30, 17, 8. Stop me when I need you. Stop me. Yes, sir. For I will restore health unto thee, uh -huh. and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Stop right there. I think that's a mouthful right there. God promised us something. He said, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thy wounds, heal thee thy wounds, saith the Lord. You can take that to the bank. Amen. 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 Uh, special prayer request list. Let's look at very familiar scripture, Philippians 4.19. And most of us can quote it, but I want to read it just so I don't misquote that scripture. Philippians 4.19. Or if somebody else want to get it, grab hold. Philippians 4 and 19. Yeah. But my God. Yes, sir. Shall supply all your needs uh -huh. according to his riches and uh -huh. glory. By Christ Jesus. My God, once again. Uh, yeah. But my God. Who's God? My God. God. My God. Shall. It ain't that he might or he could. It says he shall supply how many of our needs? Oh. Oh. How many? Oh. Oh. So not only is he my God, not only <clears throat> shall he supply, but he going to take care of all my needs. According to whose riches? My riches? No, his. his riches. According to his riches. His. In glory. Yeah. By who? Christ Jesus. By our boss. Yeah. So, once again, I think that's great news. Pastor, I think that's awesome news. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And for the for comfort for the bereaved families, let's turn to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4. Revelation 21. Revelation 21, chapter 21, verse 4. And be God, grab that one. You go ahead. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Listen, that was that's all we needed to hear. So for everyone going through the bereavement process, listen, God said he will wipe away all your tears. And there will be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. And I am just faithful enough to believe that whatever he promised us in his word, he is going to do. Amen. Amen. And I believe I'm in a church that believes just like I believe. Yeah. So that means if they all believe what I believe, we believe the same thing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So with your prayer partner. Let's go ahead and pray for two minutes, real quick. Mm -hmm. Sick and shut in, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, A. Special prayer request list, Philippians 4, 19. And for <coughs> comfort for the bereaved family, Revelation chapter 21 <coughs> and verse 4. And it is okay for you to switch prayer partners. Amen? So let us stand and go. Yeah, let's hang on One minute. <laughs> No 
heal all our diseases. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continue to be in my mind. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear the Lord and be made. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. The Lord, have mercy on you. I thought I was in the right place. Hallelujah. And certainly welcome you to prayer service and Bible study at the Macedonia Church. The very first uh, prayer service and Bible study that we were uh, are having for the year 2020 Amen. and it's going to be a special special occasion Amen. and so I'm not going to be before you long uh, I do want to remind all of our leaders this Sunday is our installation service so we're asking all that can and will uh, make sure you're here and if you can't be here make sure you let me know uh, so that we can get our um, our, pro our appropriate uh, leaders in place and let's get ready to work Amen. for this year for we are faith walking yes. with 2020 vision. Yes. And that's what we want to install our leaders to help us do. Amen. And um, so we, we want to make sure you know that. Uh, Reverend uh, DeAndre Perry, young man from the Macedonian Baptist Church in Bible Creek. Amen. Uh, Amen. Be here. He has been here to help us with BBS. Yes. And uh, we're looking for a word from the Lord and encouragement from the Lord. Uh, continue to pray for our, our families that have gone through the bereavement process. Yes. Uh, we have a, a lot going on. Yes. And so uh, if, there's ever needed, if there's ever a time that needs Amen. our prayers, uh, this is that time. Amen. And not only Amen. those who are going through the bereavement process, we got a uh, decent number of people. We have family members or themselves who are very ill. Amen. And so we want to make sure that they know that their church family or their uh, the family, that, the church that is uh, the church for the community. Uh, we are here and we're on our posts. Um, let me encourage our family, our church family, to make sure you always look unto the hills from which coming your head. And I say that because Sometimes things will change in the church. Yeah. And sometimes people will change positions. Yeah. And situations will change. Yeah. But if you look into the hills yeah. from which coming through help, then you'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. When God told Moses, Moses, it's time for you to come on home. He told Moses when he was about to go off the scene. Amen. He took Moses up and allowed him to seal him to the promised land. He said, but you can't go. But when it was time for Moses to go off the scene, he called somebody else's name, Joshua. Joshua. Amen. And Joshua had the same anointing that Moses had. Amen. What am I saying? Whenever there is situation, there are changes in the church. Don't look at what the change is. Let's look to God. Because we just read a prayer and said a prayer. My God shall supply all your needs. So whatever we need, he'll supply it. So we don't get shocked over change because change is inevitable. Now don't try to read into it. I ain't going nowhere. I'll be right here. I'll be right here. At least that's the plan. And if God called me home then, there wasn't nothing I could do about that anyway. But um, make sure we also work hard, be diligent about loving each other. Amen. Amen. Loving and being loving. Don't just want to be loved, Amen. be loving. And so tonight, uh, it's a couple other things. If we have time, uh, Sister Bree had a question about point number two in the sermon on Sunday. But I got two, preach uh, two teachers coming. So if I happen not to be able to answer it tonight, I'll answer it offline. And then if we think about it in, uh, at a later date, I'll just hit it again. Um, point number two was... Uh, if we're going to walk by, if we're going to be faith walking with 2020 vision, uh, the second essential is that 
there is faith and a future. Amen. And she wanted, she had a question and wanted a little more clarification out of the sermon about that. Now, anytime you start asking me questions out of a sermon, oh Lord Jesus, you ask me on a Tuesday about a, something I said on Sunday. Woo. You done made this little pastor happy. I know that somebody is listening. Tonight, say tonight. Tonight. Without further ado, tonight we have two teachers. Um, in the year 2019, at the very end, we were privileged to have trained, I think it was four, was it four, four. teachers? Yes. And uh, three of those new teachers and their uh, experienced partner, if you will, have already presented. But the fourth teacher was not available at the time, but that teacher is on hand tonight. Amen. And this is uh, the last time that that teacher will be available for a little while. And so uh, we want to take this opportunity to make sure you hear what God has placed in the Macedonia church. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have a, a newbie and we have an experienced teacher that's going to come before you. And so without further ado, it is with great, uh, uh, great privilege, not only as a pastor, but as a husband and a father, yeah. that I bring before you tonight my baby girl, <laughs> Ms. Jamila McKenzie. <laughs> My wife, the leading lady of the Macedonian church. So, I believe that you will be blessed for the experience tonight. So, without further ado, Miss Jamila McKenzie. to give honor to the pastor who yeah, has given yeah. me the opportunity well first train me and then giving me the opportunity to deliver this word to his father yeah. so i will be teaching on the elevation of patience based on isaiah 40 verses 29 through 31 and it reads he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion but those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. So tonight I aim to show you how waiting on the Lord is an elevating process. Do we have any avid runners in the room? Yeah, I used to run a lot. Awesome. And, and in the balcony. That's great. I'm not an avid runner. <laughs> My joints do not prefer running, but I did girls on the run in elementary school. And after completing my first 5K, I was so proud of myself, but I was also really tired and really thirsty. But I, water would cut it. I needed electrolytes. Before that day, Gatorade never tasted so good. <laughs> because before then, I hadn't been lacking that salt, that energy, those electrolytes. As we all find in life, Eventually, we all get tired and need more energy. After replenishing my energy, what I did not need to do was run another race. What I needed to do was rest. Sometimes God wants us to rest up for the next stage and for the next race. Sometimes we have to wait on the Lord. Well, many children think of sleep as boring. And the absence of activity, there's actually a lot going on while we rest which is why it's so important. According to research from Sleep Science in 2019, the top 10 benefits of a good night's sleep include sleep reducing stress, improving memory, lowering blood pressure, strengthening your immune system, keeping your heart healthy, behaving as a painkiller, and lowering your chance of diabetes, just to name a few. So clearly there are a lot of benefits of sleep and to rejuvenation, and we need to view patience as an opportunity for rejuvenation and preparation. The first of three points showing how you are elevated by patience in point number one is you need to recognize your provision. Break that down. In verse 29, we see God's character. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. That is grace. That is empowerment. That is revival. This, that is mobility. 
In total, that is provision. All right. Yeah. As I heard from Pastor Ryan Lowe of New Life Church, most people use their health to create wealth, yep. and then spend their whole wealth trying to buy back their health. We do not always recognize when provision when it is not food or shelter or clothes or other tangible things. We do not always recognize the things that we cannot control that God has sustained for us until it is disrupted. Until we are almost blind, we do not appreciate our sight the same way. That's right. Until we cannot walk without excruciating pain, we do not appreciate our hips holding our weight and rotating the way we need them to. Until there were blood clots in our lungs. We did not always know how thankful we should be for our blood flowing smoothly in our lungs. Because we usually do not think have to think about that, we do not expect it to be there. Oh, sorry, let me say that again. Because we usually do not have to think about it, we expect it to be there. As Christians, our sights should be not only set on what we can see. We should have a vision, a 2020 vision, that requires God to complete it, since we serve an almighty God. But often, when we are impatient about what stage we are in now, we neglect to see how much God has provided to even get us where we are in that very moment. So in verse 30, when the youth had fallen from exhaustion, they probably were not thinking about how blessed they were to have even have as much energy as they had before. They probably were not reflecting on how blessed they were to even live that far into their youth. But if they had never experienced exhaustion, they probably would not have the appreciation for full energy. Right. So we need to recognize our provision. Because for one, God told us in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. Another reason we need to recognize our provision is because it reflects the provider. In every situation, no matter how long, how drawn out, how unexpected, how seemingly hopeless, God is there. Oh, yeah. If we know that God is present and we know that he is a provider, we can know that while we are supposed to be patient, God will not leave us without the things we need. Often he is trying to show us something that we would miss if we did not slow down where we are right now. So now that we recognize our provision, the rest of our blessing will require a new perspective. So that's point number two. Requires a new perspective. Man. Those who wait on the Lord are the ones who soar like high like eagles. Yeah. While eagles tend to sit higher in trees than other birds anyway, there is a lay of the land that an eagle can only get if it flies beyond the tree that it is in. In order to soar, the eagle has to have airflow under its wings. And one reason that I love eagles is that they fly into the storm and allow the wind to lift them up. Sometimes, God leads us into uncomfortable situations to ultimately lift us up and show us something new that will require his provision and show us something that we would never discover on our own. There are, there are often times that we are impatient because we do not even understand why we are there, why we have to be uncomfortable, and certainly not for this long. But Isaiah 55, 9, tells us that God's ways are greater than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So his timing being different than ours doesn't mean that God has changed, but that we need to adjust our plans, our opinions, and our perspective. When I first started driving, I was extremely impatient. Okay? In my mind, when the car in front of me was going slow, I was just thinking about how I should not be in the spot that I am right now. If it wasn't for this other car, I would be beyond the part, point that I'm at. But now I realize, maybe God wants me to observe my surroundings. Enjoy more of my music that hypes me up before I work. Not just focus on what is not happening. And it is a safety hazard if I force myself into the space that I think I should be in. So we need to trust God's timing. And when we find ourselves getting impatient, we need to adjust our perspective. Amen. For me, adjusting my perspective included a sub-point within a new perspective of receiving peace. Amen. There were so many mornings that I would get to work and my computer would take so long to look. 
So I would call the IT people and them fixing it would take so long to fix. Jesus challenged me to be patient though, even with technology. And once I chose patience, my experience changed. Once I accepted that my time would include waiting and that would be okay, I was overcome with peace. Then it occurred to me that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Let me push that. <laughs> when I experienced peace, I was experiencing Jesus in my situation. By choosing to be patient, I saw Jesus in my situation, and that made all the difference. So this just further emphasizes the need, or this just further emphasizes that elevation through patience requires new perspective. Now that we, number one, recognize our provision, and number two, have a new perspective, yeah. we can experience victory. Amen. The process of patience, in point number three, results in palpable victory. Amen. Results in palpable yeah. victory. Yeah. Right. In verse 30, we, find, we have used finding themselves weak, tired, and exhausted. But in verse 31, anyone who waits on the Lord finds new strength, regardless yeah. of age. Yeah. That's victory. Yes. Yeah. Soaring high on wings like eagles, that's victory. Yeah. Running and not growing weary, that's victory. Yeah. Walking and not fainting, victory. Yeah. With our new perspective, we now realize that God does not owe us, period. Yeah. He does not owe us strength or ability to run, to walk or to even be alive. And he is the reason that we have normal function of our bodies. But normal involves frustration. Normal involves fatigue. And normal involves failure. God gives us supernatural victory. So if you look back at verse 31, it says, those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. If it had to be found, it was not there before. It was there... Uh, it, it was not there under normal conditions that we love to logic with. Yeah. We know that patience will result in palpable victory because we can put our full weight on what God is saying with his time. Yeah. He will direct your path, and that will always lead to supernatural victory. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Impatience short-circuits your blessings. Yeah. So I want everyone to put their hand up like a mirror or a selfie camera and say, Self. No. Impatience, Impatience. Short, circuits. short circuits, my blessing. My my blessings. Blessings. Yes. I urge you to grab hold of this the next time that you are behind a slow car. Instead of trying to pass them or rush them along, which could be dangerous, be patient. And thank God for even having a car. And I'm speaking to me too. <laughs> If you felt like you should have been in a relationship right now, know that God wants to mature something in you so that you're ready to steward the relationship that he has for you. Maybe you felt weary from so many job applications being rejected. But God knew that if you accepted those prior positions, you wouldn't be available for the best job for you. Allow, allow God to elevate your provision and perspective. This will result in victory with your patience. Trust the process, knowing that God is not done with you yet. This is a stage, not the destination. Then, you will see for yourself how the process of patience is going to elevate
some apostles, uh -huh. and some prophets, uh -huh. and some evangelists, mm -hmm. and some pastors, yes. and teachers. Yes. Uh -huh. For the perfecting of the saints. Yes. For the work of the ministry. Uh huh. For the edifying of the body of Christ. All right. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. what he gave him for. Amen. For all of that. Yes, Amen. 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 So let's get into it. Let's get it. When my parents were young and in love, they decided to get married. Amen. Not because they had to get married. Their little bundle was not going to be on the way for like two more years. But they were just love, in love and young and happy. And they felt like it's us against the world and no obstacles we can't overcome. But soon after they got married, they kind of ran into one obstacle. What was that? Well, they had a slightly different faith background from each other. Now, they were both Christians, but my mother was a very devout Catholic girl. She went to church every week. She was very serious about attending Mass every single week. My father, on the other hand, he was a sometimes maybe practicing Seventh-day Adventist. So as they were planning to start their family, they started getting into these discussions about how we're going to raise the children. Because that's important, right? Yeah. And what do you think my mom wanted? Catholic. Right, to raise us Catholic. Yeah. And what do you think my dad wanted? Sometimes. Sometimes. Right. <laughs> they was like, ain't no reason for them to make up their minds too soon. Don't baptize them into something that's going to lock them in for the rest of their life. Let them make up their minds when they're old enough to do that. So, even though I went to church regularly with my mom. By the time I got to college, I was kind of a do drop in. That meant I visit church with my friends sometimes. I might go to church with my mom sometimes. But for sure, I did not have a church home of my own, and I didn't have a church family. And I was really all right with that. I know it surprises you now, but now I was good. Like, I'm good. Me and God got an understanding. He see me when he see me. We good. But when I got to college, then I started finding out what God's plan for good really was. Because he introduced me to somebody at Yale, 12 hours away from my house, who had grown up 20 minutes from me. And we became best friends. Emily became my best friend. And Emily was a church girl for real. Amen. So Emily had a church home and a church family that was where? In Cleveland, Cleveland yeah. where we came from. Yeah. So now, here come Thanksgiving, here come Christmas. Uh -huh. What does Emily invite me to do? Go to church. Right. And I'm fine. I'm okay going to church. I ain't scared of church. Right. I'll go to church with you. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good old time. So I'm in church with Emily, and I'm noticing when Emily comes to church, it's like when Jeffrey come back from school. Everybody want to know, how's it going? How you doing? How's the adjustment? How the exams? They're just happy to see her, and they miss her, and they love her. And I'm just astounded by this, because I have never seen nothing like this before. And finally, since it keeps happening, like it wasn't just Thanksgiving, same thing happened at Christmas, same thing happened at spring break, I finally realized this is actually a thing. Like, this church family thing is a thing. And I don't, I don't have this, but when I have kids, mm, my children are going to have a church family. Amen. 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 So y'all know, I was on the outside looking in. And I made the decision just based on the benefits I saw, right? But how many know that in any kind of family, there's benefits and there's costs? Amen. Amen. So let's just take our natural family. Let's just take our healthy biological family. In a healthy family, what are some of the benefits for the children? What do children get out of this? Well, 
Somebody. Security. Security? Security. Yes. Food? <laughs> hmm? What else is up here? Shelter. Shelter. Yes. Good. What good, else? Good, healthy genes. Healthy genes. There you go. Good gene pool. Yes. And uh, let's see. Do they learn how to behave? Oh, yeah. They should. Home training. That's what we call it. Right? Do they learn how to work? Do they get any chores? Oh, yeah. Yes. But in order to get those benefits, hmm, do they get to make the rules? No. The children don't get to make the rules? No. Huh. I agree. Who makes the rules, y'all? The parents. Yes. The parents in the family make the rules. Amen. Now, of course, they have to consider their children's personalities how God is dealing with them, with their children. It's not like it's cookie cutter and you just do the same thing Amen. for every child. You gotta tailor that thing oh, as a parent yeah. so that you get the results that you need to get out of who God has given you to raise. Amen? Yeah. Amen? But do you base it on your moods, on your whims, and whether you're tired? No. 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 Ideally, we run our household based on what's best for the family, and what's best for the children. Yeah. And in a healthy family, the children respect their parents yeah. and follow the rules. Yeah. So we just touched on this a little bit, but what are the things the children then have to do in the family? Like what are costs to the children? What do they have to do? They have to do their chores. They have to do their chores, yes. What else do they have to do? Listen. They have to obey their parents, yes they do. Ah, uh, they have to respect them. And if they do too much eye rolling, back talking, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, we request some attitude adjustments, don't we? <laughs> what do children get to eat? Whatever they want? No. Whatever we cook? <laughs> what do they get to do during the day? Whatever they want? No. They got to go to what? School. Yes. And then they usually need to do homework. Now, the interesting thing is even though these are important things, you know children don't usually like that. They don't usually like rules. They don't usually feel like they want structure. No. A normal child will not always like the rules. Will not always agree. Will not always want to follow them things. Because as a child, you don't know what's in your best interest. Yeah. You don't know what you're going to need in the future. Yeah. As a child, you want what you want. You want it now. You want to be popular. You don't want to do nothing difficult. You don't want to do nothing if it ain't fun. You want all the good things your friends have. And you do not want to have to work. You don't want that. Amen. Amen. Having a church family, it's got some similarities, y'all. Yes. So in a healthy church, who sets the rules? The pastor. Yes. The pastor. And what are the rules based on? The word of God. Yes. Y'all know this. Y'all yeah. peep the notes ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> the word of God. Yes, and God's direction to the pastor, that lines up with the word of God. That's what we heard in Ephesians 4 and 12. So then, according to Numbers 11, 16, what we're all going to witness this coming Sunday is going to be the pastor who has selected leaders who will help him, who have the same spirit that he has, who will lead with him according to God's word so he doesn't have to do it alone. Amen. All of us, every one of us, has a responsibility at Macedonia Amen. to help the pastor create a what? That's it. That's it right there. Amen. But first, we have to be willing to be transformed ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Continually. And the rules in the church need to be based on God's word, not our convenience, mm -hmm. not our preferences as members, or even as leaders. And our following the rules should be based on our commitment to Christ. Amen. So Amen. his will is done, not just our will. That's right. Amen. 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 
And we have to do that in order to get the benefits of being in a church family. All right. So for tonight's lesson, I only have three points. I don't even have sub points like somebody broke it down. Amen. Amen. So here are my three points. I just got three. One, it's an us thing. Say it's an us thing. It's an us thing. Two, it's a together thing. It's a together thing. Three, it's a habit thing. It's a habit thing. Yes. So, looking at point number one, what do I mean by it's an us thing? I'm glad you asked. Verse 24 tells us to let us consider one another, right? Yep. To stir up love and good works. Amen. So coming to church is not supposed to just be about me. Nope. Not supposed to be. Nope. When I come to church, it shouldn't be just about me. It's not supposed to be just about me hearing a great word from our great pastor and the other preachers Amen. that preach this word of in this place. Amen. It's not supposed to just be about me hearing my favorite song. No. It's not bad, but it's important that it's about more than those things because what else is supposed to happen? I'm supposed to encourage somebody else every time I come to church. Amen. I'm supposed to welcome somebody every time I come to church. Amen. I'm supposed to share truth with somebody else, help somebody else find a good seat, yeah. help somebody else understand how things go in service. I should be on my job Amen. when I come into the church. Yes. Somebody else ought to feel better. Because I came to church today right. yeah. every time I come to church. Amen. 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 And that's not just me. The verse says that we are supposed to stir each other up Amen. in love Amen. and good works. Amen. So now, if I say to you, if I say to you, oh, Minister Rynesha, listen, I didn't come to church last week. Because somebody just got on my last nerve. I don't know how they found it. I thought it was hiding. But they got on my last nerve, and I'm just not doing it. If I come to you and I say, Sister Master, the thing is, I just don't feel like it because I don't feel like anybody cares that I'm there. I don't feel like they're going to miss me if I'm not there. Then I'm not doing what verse 24 says. Because then I'm considering me. Yes. I'm not supposed to consider me. I'm supposed to consider each other. To stir up good works in each other. Amen. So not to criticize you, but to stir up love and good works in me. And not love toward me. Not the Justine McKenzie Admiration Society. No, sir. No, ma'am. That's not what this is. This is the church of Jesus Christ. In fact, if I always tell you the truth of the word, and if I always say what the Bible says, sometimes somebody's going to get mad at me. Sometimes somebody is not going to like me. So if it is the Justine McKenzie Popularity Club, then I'm really not on my job. Amen. But if I love God, yes. I have to tell the truth, uh -huh. and I have to follow his lead. Amen. 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 So really, Saturday. Saturday, we need to start thinking about who we're going to encourage on Sunday. Amen. Our college students who are headed back yeah. or are already back in school, our music ministry, that helps set the atmosphere for worship every week. Yeah. Our culinary ministry yeah. that prepares breakfast every Sunday. Our church clerk that creates those lovely bulletins every Amen. week. Your presence and mine should stir up love and good works that honor God. Yeah. All right, so we understand it's an us thing because that was point number one. Amen. But now point number two, I told you in advance, it's a together, it's a together yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I know y'all want to know, yeah. what's the difference between an us thing and a together thing? Are you sure that's not the same thing? So I'll, I'll do what I can. Dig the bone, I'm going to do what I can to explain how point number two is different than point number one. So point number two comes out of Hebrews verse 25. Do we still have Hebrews 
10, 25? Yes. All right. What's the sense? Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Awesome. That wasn't it. Amen. So, just want to point out something. Yes, ma'am. If we're here in the same space in Macedonia, yeah, amen. sitting on pews with no interaction, that's next to each other, or in another word, contiguous, but that is not together. So I, I have an example for this, y'all. How many of y'all have those things I passed out? I got one. Could you hold it up? I was trying you to hold that thing? Oh, now that's a crochet granny square that I passed out to just a few people. Right, right, right. So everybody try to try to see if you can see a granny square near you. Right? So they're holding up the granny squares, y'all. So I have an assignment. See, I'm glad you said that. I have an assignment that's associated with the granny squares. I want those of you who have the granny squares to wrap them around your neck so you'll be warm. <laughs> Seems like y'all have a little trouble with that, because why? It's too small. Whoa. That is kind of a revelation. But what if, what if, somebody help me hold this. What if it was a bunch of them all connected? Amen. Oh, wow. Amen. Now would you be able to wrap that around yourself yeah. to keep warm? Oh, yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. Y'all got to clap for our model. Yes. Yes. Amen. Because one square by itself is too small. But if it's connected to other squares, now it can cover somebody. Now it can keep somebody warm. The connection between all of our individual squares, that's the unity that's provided in a church. Amen? Shared worship, shared prayer, shared belief, shared understanding, shared passion and concerns and fellowship. That is what connects us and transforms us from just being a whole bunch of individuals yes, to being a connected body. Amen. That is unity. Amen. So that makes us more powerful. That makes our impact bigger. Amen? Yes. That's what God is saying is good and pleasant when we dwell together in unity. Amen. 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 Good. Good. But if it was easy, people would do it all the time. Right. There is an obstacle to unity. Yes, ma'am. Having unity requires that we get close to each other. Amen. It requires that we be a little bit in each other's business. Yes, Even in Albion, yes, where nobody wants anybody in their business. Yes, Amen? Amen. 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 Amen? But how are we going to pray for each other if we don't know each other? How are we going to pray for our children, for marriages, for grandchildren, for emotional health, for physical health, for school, yeah, yeah. for businesses? How are we going to pray until we all get our breakthrough if we don't have unity? Amen. 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 So we know it's an us thing. Yep. It's a together thing. It's got to be more to it. That's right. So here's the last thing we got. It's a habit thing. Now that's also out of verse 25. And the verse says that some people are in the habit of not gathering together. Now there are some habits that you don't want to continue all the time. We're just coming out of Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I promise you. I don't need to eat every day like it's Thanksgiving. Also, I don't need to spend money every day like it's Black Friday. Y'all with me? I see you, Pastor. I do. I do. But there are some habits that kind of get in the way of being 
sitting in church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, there are people that go grocery shopping every Sunday morning. Why do they go on Sunday morning? I don't know. Because it's not that busy. Saturday is the day that's the busy day for grocery shopping. Okay. Then there are people that have to go to brunch in the casino on Sunday morning because that's when they serve the mimosas. Oh, that right. Uh, oh, no, I have not had it. So we don't want to cultivate that habit. We want to cultivate a different habit according to this scripture. So the Bible says it should be our regular habit to come together. Amen. Now, I do want to point out that the time we should come to church is when the church is open. Right. Yeah. See, coming to church when nobody else is here is not exactly what this scripture is talking about. All right. All right. Let's come when the other believers are here, because yeah. then it's clear that we're considering one another. Right. But we're also supposed to do this more frequently as we see the end of the world getting closer. Now, we've been praying about our president, right? Yeah. And we need to keep on doing that. But that's not the only thing we have to commit to prayer. We are watching human trafficking go on in the world, gun violence going on in the world. We have now witnessed legalized use of recreational marijuana. And the overall climate of the world tells us this world is coming to an end yes. and Jesus is on his way back for us. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So how often should we get together at church to prepare for that? How often? Once a month? No. Every Sunday. Uh, Easter, Christmas, and Mother's Day. No? no. no? Yeah. Okay. Every so I'm going to propose to you that we need to be in church every Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Every Sunday. Yes, ma'am. Also, what's today? Wednesday. And where are we? At church. Because that's where we need to be on Wednesdays, yes. Amen. Now, and no one is to be left behind. Amen. We all need each other. And we all need to participate regularly in church. Amen. Why? Because it is an us thing. It is a together thing. And it is a habit thing. So thank God with me for this church. Amen. Amen. Now we can give it up for both our teachers. Right. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, that's known as bless. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, we got about five minutes, and I'm not going to just use that time up. Uh, for this is frivolously, uh, are there any questions, comments, concerns, anything that I can ask, answer, or these teachers can answer, anything, everybody they cool, yeah, they did all right, yeah. 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 they did all right, yeah. it shows the strength of our Christian education yeah. uh, um, um, initiatives here, uh, we, myself, and our, as a matter of fact, uh, superintendent, would you stand? I'm our superintendent, I'm our assistant superintendent, and we together, we train teachers now, Amen. so this is the result. Um, we believe with all our heart that if you obey and serve, you will experience and you'll grow. If you obey and come to all the teachers' training yes. and do all the stuff we say, mm -hmm. and then serve the Lord with your gift of teaching to the very best of your ability, yes. you'll experience a night like they've experienced. Yes. Yes. And you'll grow. Yes. 
Because yeah. they're not the same now as they were at 7 o'clock. No. Amen. 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 So they're proof positive. They elevated them. That the Macedonia church is a church that if you obey yes. and serve, yes. you'll experience yes. and grow. Yes. And guess what? It ain't just for them. It's for everybody. Amen. 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 Any other questions for me? All right. Um, with these last couple of minutes, I want to answer uh, Bree's, Miss Bree's question. Oh, oh, we got to go ahead. First lady had really had an eye opener teaching and learning how to uh, pray for people. And I Question about the uh, the sermon, Faith Walking with 2020 Vision. Point number two, uh, the second essential to uh, Faith Walking with 2020 Vision is you need to have faith and a future. Amen. Faith and a future. Um, so the quick cliff note version of it, and then if we, we need to do more discussion on it, that might be a Tuesday night deal, so uh, come on and call it. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 uh, his focus, his focus was actually on uh, making a distinction between how he could not actually be in the presence of the Lord the way he really wanted to because he was still in the flesh. You've heard many times it says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But the first thing he said before he said that, he says to be present in the body is to be absent from the Lord. Then he made a, a, a Comparison because Paul was a tent maker. He says, when I make tents, that tent is a temporary home. And in order for me to have a permanent home, I have to shed my temporary home. I can set up a tent every night, but in the morning I take the tent down and I move on. He says, in order for me to experience the fullness of everything, I have to come out of my tent. Yes. So he really was comparing our fleshly body as a moving, walking tent. We are tent wanderers. Amen. We're tent walkers. And so Paul, his faith wasn't just like our faith. Most of our faith is, Lord, I, I believe that you're going to help me pay my bills. Yeah. Lord, I believe you're going to help me get a good report at the doctor this yeah. week. Lord, I believe that you're going to help me get a promotion. Now, there's nothing wrong with that faith, but Paul had a faith that was beyond this world. Yeah. He said, now, I have faith enough to believe that if I walk long enough in this tent that I do what I'm supposed to, one day I'm going to shed this tent and I'm going to get a mansion. Amen. And so when we have faith now, now so if we're going to faith walk with 2020 vision, Macedonia, we're moving beyond regular faith. Amen. We get to that faith and go through that to go to the faith that Paul saw. Like, because people are dying every single day. And so you have to have a faith that is beyond just pay your bills. Because guess what? He, he helped us pay our bills and then we make another bill. But when I can see myself in my mansion. When I can see myself. Moving through this world actually headed somewhere. So anybody that ever feel like you got stuck, you need to have a faith in a future because now you know that you know every single day may not be the greatest day for me, but I'm headed somewhere. Right. Amen. I'm headed to a place where eventually I'm gonna shed this tent. I'm gonna put this tent off and I'm gonna move to a mansion that ain't gonna never be moved. Amen. Am I talking to anybody? Yeah. 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 So, so when I faith walk now, I push past everything you show me. Amen. 
I push past your attitude. I push past your disappointments in me. I push past your expectations. I push past everything because I see myself in the presence of the Lord. And I can't really be all the way there until I actually share this. So what it does, it helped me with my daily walk. But death don't cause me to cry like it used to. Because death now, yes, I'll cry, but it don't stop me. Death can mobilize some of us because it's such a shock to our system. But then when I understand, I'm just a walking tent. And as a walking tent, eventually I'm going to have to put that tent down to get my permanent home. To put the tent down is death. To get my permanent home is life. And that's my future. And so I rejoice with them. I rejoice at the, at the point of death for those who died in Christ because they had hope and now they didn't put off their tent and now they have a mansion. Do you know that, Brother Phil, your grandbaby got a better house than you? Amen. Let me tell you about Amen. your baby, your grandbaby's house. Nevaeh has a house that has a floor with transparent gold. Yes. The gold is so pure, she can see straight through it. Listen, she lives on a street where the street is not paved with asphalt. The street is paved with gold. So if she wants her little pretty feet to walk out, she's walking on gold. And guess what? She ain't in pain. No, yeah. oh my yeah. wow. So there's no need for us to be in pain no more. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Is, is that making sense? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. So we can talk about it some more. I ain't gonna get them. I don't wanna. Yeah, we we done. Okay. Everybody good? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. When I see Jesus, yeah. 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 when I see Jesus. Amen. No more darkness or disappointments when I see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless your heart. Thank you for y'all talk tonight. Good Lord, have mercy. I do some teaching. I'm going to get me a granny, granny, what was it called, granny thing? Granny square. I'm going to get me a granny square. No, 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 no. That ain't, that ain't the granny square. I'm the granny square. I'm the granny square. I'm going to get me a granny square. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another expression of your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for life, your strength, and a sound mind. Thank you, God, for allowing us to hear your word and see you in the process. Thank you, God, for every prayer that was lifted up. We know that the scripture tells us there's a time that's coming in heaven that you're going to cause all heavenly hosts to be quiet for the extent of 30 minutes so that you can hear the prayers of the saints. And Lord, we thank you right now that you heard our prayers tonight, God. And we know that if you heard our prayers, that you're going to give us the petition of our hearts. Yes. So we thank you for every answered prayer tonight. Yes. And then we thank you for the taught word, God. Yes. We thank you, God, for Sister Jamila McKenzie. Yes. We thank you for Sister Justine McKenzie. Yes. We thank you, God, for the elevation of patience. We thank you for thanking God for this church. And Lord, continue to be our God. We'll be your people. Continue to bless us. We'll give your name glory. Continue to honor us and favor us. And we'll give your name praise. And and glory we thank you right now that you have given us a charge that if we obey and serve that we'll experience and grow so we commit to that we thank you for that and now as we leave this place whenever your presence we leave with your love with your peace and with your joy we thank you right now in the precious matchless name of jesus the christ and all the god's people together said